Chapter 2, everyone. Let's go. We're doing Chapter 2. We're doing Chapter 2. Hey, hey, hey! Ronald Boo, my muse and ghoulish life companion. How fareth thee on this fine spring morning? All the finer for seeing you. Hubba <laughs> hubba! Okay, not sure why that came out of my receiver. I've never said that before in my life. Please don't tell anyone that I'm like this. Look, honestly, Hubba's and Notwood aside, I'm just super stoked to see you. The, that little demon, he's... No, little Billy! Little Billy, I beseech you. Could you please go bother literally anyone else in Dial Town today? Well, yes, I could, which is what makes this all the more special. I swear to phone God, you low center of gravity hobgoblin. So, what you gonna do about it, huh? You can't physically attack me, play da plan daddy. Not unless you want to get sentenced to life on the electric chair. Rolaboo, I implore you. Murder him with your bare hands and I'll back up your alibi, please. All right, enough. Scram, you hooded gremlin. Or what? Come on, man. You'll know I'll cartwheel kick you in your formless gonads. Fine, fine. I've got some weird looking bugs I found under my dad's mattress to fry. Under my magnifying glass anyway. <laughs> See ya, bozos. Over, shouldn't he be in school right now? Isn't, is this one of those weird weekends the old ones prophesize about? Nah, as far as I know, Little Billy got suspended recently for turning the staircases in his school into makeshift water slides. Well, that doesn't sound so bad. He didn't use water for the food part of the water slide. What did he... What did he use? Wait. Wait, what else? Wait, what? Wait. What else could he use? I'm not going to think about it for too long because then my mind goes to places where I don't want it to. Juvie would be too good for him. He needs to be government contained. Thanks for scaring him off, by the way. That one... He scares me. Anything for you, Oliver. Anything, you say? So, I take it that you are indeed willing to assist me in filming this groovy feature-length picture, then. I'm willing to direct a movie with you, if that's what you mean. It was indeed what I meant, yes! Oh, by the way, Mr. Dickens should be passing this here counter any moment, and I'm gonna ask him to relieve me from my post so we can finish filming the movie. Anything I need to know before I make a fool of both myself and or of you? Specifically, yeah, there is one thing, actually. I might need you to back me up on an itty-bitty fib of mine. <laughs> Hell yeah, man, I love sinning. Time to lie. Uh, hey, now, I don't exactly see this as a barefaced lie, per se. More of a subtle, less blatant lie. Okay, then spill the beans, man. What's up? So, like, <laughs> I haven't really been as honest with Mr. Dickens about the progress of the film that I should have. He thinks it's basically finished, doesn't he? Wow, right on the money. Oh, you should be a green diviner of some sort. Say, any idea what next week's, what next week's lit, wi uh, 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 okay, give me a second. Uh, say, any idea of what next week's winning lottery numbers might be? I'm sure there will be a three in there somewhere. Any idea how many threes there will be? I didn't read that part, whoops. Right, thanks. That's my pension plan sorted then. Oh, shoot, look groovy, here he comes. <laughs> I have an idea for this one. I have an idea for this one. There we are, okay. Wait. Okay. Tally ho, gents! 
Ah, bloody fine afternoon, is it? Oh, right then. I believe introductions are in order. Ronald Boo, this is my groovy mentor, employer, and good pal, Ebenezer Dickens. Charmed. Mr. Dickens, this is Ronald Boo, my green friend. Don't you mean your green boyfriend? Oh, right. I, I mean... Oliver, my boy. Tut, tut, tut. You assured me that you wanted the rest of the evening off for a strictly cinematographer foray. I, I, I do, Mr. Dickens. I... Oh, very well, very well. <clears throat> as long as we have a finished flick by the end of this evening, everything should be right as rain. Oh, speaking of... You did tell me that the movie is nearing completion, did you not, old chum? Oh, of course, sir. Progress has been as gnarly as can be. One more day of filming is all we need, I, I reckon. Jolly good show, my boy. Because I'm afraid that our utilities bills are beyond due, and I don't know how much longer we can keep this show running. How long have those bills been on your desk? A few weeks, at the very least. Yikes. How do you still have electricity in here? Well, you see, old chum, if you take a good hard gander at the ceiling, you may notice that I've merely strung lanterns from the rooftop. Are, are those fireflies in the lanterns? Kerosene is out of our budget, I'm afraid, old top. Well, this is grim. Ah, but this movie might just bring the people back. And if it doesn't, we'll just have to close our doors for the rest of the time eternal. No pressure, lads. Right, we'd better get to work then, since there's just so much at stake. Say, Oliver, before you go, could you hastily fetch my pocket watch from my desk? I assure you, it'll take but a jiffy. You bet, Mr. Dickens. One portable clock on a string coming up. Now then, it would seem that you and I have a solitary moment together. Why do you need portable time anyway? The way I see it, stuff is always happening in the present. So who cares what the clock has to say? The correct time is right now. Well, some of us have jobs, engagements, and other such obligations that require diligent timekeeping to keep up with. All that sounds dreadful. I'm sorry for your loss. It matters not anyway. <laughs> not in any way as I, and I do apologize, <coughs> sorry, it matters not anyway as, and I do apologize profusely for the deceit, my pocket watch is presently in my pocket. I merely orchestrated this moment momentary interruption in order for us to have a brief moment to speak. About what? Well, you see, I wanted to ask that you, t that you take good care of my boy, Oliver. You see... I once had a family, but alas, my wife is no longer of this world, but my own sons have all left the nest, so to speak. Whoa, dude, you have a nest too? Somehow, I feel as though you may be referring to a literal nest rather than a figurative one. Uh, aren't you? I am not, no. Look, look, I'm not here to judge your past, or even Oliver's choice of acquaintances. For your information, we're... No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that one. Well, you see... Look, Oliver's a young man. It is his time to make his own place in the world. Forge his own future, carve his own frontiers, and all that developmental riffraff. Oliver is much like myself, in that he once had a family, but no longer does. Well, that's just depressing. Sometimes, fate compels two people to stick together. Together. Whoops. Perhaps you and Oliver were fated to cross paths, just as he and I were. So you're saying it's destiny, baby? Perhaps, perhaps not. After all, 
require you and I to dictate what the stars wish to see. I find that the worth of one's life is often measured by the strength of the bonds one holds. And the measure of their wildest dreams too, perhaps. Because, what is life without purpose, without drive? Tell me, lad, do you have a dream? I want to be rich and big, smoke and hot babes, and race fast cars! No. Uh, I want to see my kids grow up big and strong. My apologies, my green friend. You didn't instinctively strike me as a father. Well, well, almost a dad. My egg clutch has to hatch first. I see, yes. <sighs> Man, would you like to see my eggs? Lad, all I'm asking is that you do your best to encourage Oliver. Raise his spirits, should they falter, and ensure that he finishes this film. By any means necessary. Short of removing his fingers with a pair of bolt cutters, perhaps. Can do, sir. Superb! That's just what I like to hear. Radio, Ollie's back, baby! <coughs> Mr. Dickens, I scoured your desk, moved all your papers, but alas, there was nearly there was nary a watch to be found. Oh, would you look at that? My pocket watch was in my pocket this whole time. I should have figured, since that's where its own name indicates it ought to be. My, what a humbling fool you have for an employer. Now, toddle off, you two. Come on, Ronald Boo, we've got a cinema to save. Uh, all right, off we pop then. See ya, Mr. Dickens. Oh, I'm so glad I don't have to press the button, the effects button anymore. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, we're good. We're good. I'm so glad I don't have to press the effects button. All right. Well, that would have been as well if I could have expected. Kudos on mostly not speaking. That was an extremely strategic move on your part. Ah, uh, thanks. I pride myself on being able to respect authority and take directions. That's great to hear. Give yourself a pat on the back. Don't tell me what to do. Right. <laughs> right, so uh, what now? Well, if we're making a movie about you, then what we need is lore. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> You've got to be kidding. <laughs> Holy, yes! Well, I'm, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait like 30 seconds for the word lore to be in the thumbnail. Oh my god! Yes! Now this is what I'm talking about. Rambu's doing lore. It's happening. It's it's happening, everyone. Get ready. Oh my god! Lore stream. Holy. I can't believe this! Yes! Yes! Now that's what I'm talking about! Ah! <laughs> Lore? <laughs> oh, you know. Info about you, story content. Something for the audience to chew over. So, are we going for gasps or pants wedding? Pal? You have something gnarly enough to make our audience crap themselves. I'd love to see it. You do sure will say the word gnarly a lot, don't you? <laughs> Thanks. I think so too. What we need is something truly wretched to hook our captive viewers in. Something extraterrestrial, perhaps. Oh, I didn't. I didn't read it because I thought, ah, did I or did I not? We home yesterday on a bicycle while you sat hunched in a basket. Ah, crap. Right, so I kind of wanted to ask, and don't take this personally. Are you some kind of funky alien? Like, what exactly are you? That's a personal question. Okay, fine. I guess you gotta give a little. I guess I. I guess you gotta give a little before folks just volunteer that sort of info. Just between you and me, I'm totally a human. Are you making fun of me? No, no, it's not like that at all. I just don't get the secrecy, is all, I guess. Oh, I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't read that one part. Okay, okay, sorry, that's completely fair. I should really know better. You know, this is a red flag. How is this a red flag? He's asking him whether or not he is human. That is a, that is a, that is a first date question. That is, that is a first date question. 
like just just get it you know get it out of the way just to double check you know are you human you know because i'm gonna be real right like that's like that's like the bar for me you know that is that is the bar you know and then it just goes up from there like are they human yes no if it's yes then 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 by god so far they're a dateable <laughs> all right that's that's the bar ah you've never been on a date well okay i mean still like it, like when i do i'll ask that question and i'll just double check the bar is on the ground no, it's not. It's not. It's not. Okay. Ah, still, human, and then that's it goes up from there. All right, it just goes up from there. You know, what we need is real, something that will really hit home. Home. Ronald Boo, are you? Come to my dumb, <laughs> come to my domicile. To your tent. Come to my tent. Wait, you're inviting me into your tent if we want strange lore to wait if we want strange kooky lore to make friend and foe alike crap their britches my tent is likely our ace in the hole radical let us make haste then inviting over oliver to my tent yes you could say things are things are getting a little a little serious you know I, I guess, I guess you could say, I guess you could say that things are getting a little serious. Oh, no, you gonna, gonna go back to my tent. You know, that, that's the second question that you ask is whether or not they want to go back to your tent. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to, to Casa de la Mi. All right. Feel free to pee anywhere that isn't my box bed. I will instantly reclaim it. I will instantly reclaim it via a feeded red urine stream if I must. Though if you do crap in the corner, do wipe before sitting down on any surfaces. That is, that is vile. I'm not an animal after all. Whoa. I, I'm in your lair. <laughs> eee! Uh, I mean, like, yeah, right. This is like gnarly and junk, I guess. You're doing an ador You're doing an adorably poor job of hiding your excitement. Aw, shucks. I mean it's just really intriguing, you know? You have no idea how long I've been wondering exactly what your layer looked like, you know? You mean for the last 36 hours or so. Yep! And boy, what a day and a half that was. So, uh, right. I'm now, in fact, brandishing my camera. So let's get to filming then. Right, so, uh, what should I be doing? Do you want me to, to do a dance? Well, is it a good dance? No, no, it is not. All right, scratch that then. Oh, hey, maybe we should record some actor commentary for like the press release and junk. <laughs> but I'm so shy. My lifestyle is atypical. A whole lot of folks out there have messy abodes, you know? The connection might make make you come off to the audience as a real flutterbum. What? You can be what the kids call relatable. Oh, heaven knows I'm relatable. I must be. Y you really mean it? Just you watch, dude. You'll be the bee's knees. <laughs> I forgot that that's how I look. I, I forgot that I'm a flesh phone. Yeah, I forgot about that part. I am I am definitely a flesh phone. Oh, man. Can you state your name for the camera, sir? Ah, I see. Let's move on from the commentary idea, maybe. Move on to something that doesn't place my pricey equipment anywhere near that mug of yours. 
Yes, fair. So what now, chief? I guess you could just act candid. Candid, like a dog? The only dog I know particularly well is also a man and a hobo. And God. Yeah, don't act like him. People cross the street to avoid him. You don't like God? The dude begs for change when he can just conjure matter at will. That's peak laziness. You gotta marvel at that hustle though. Look, just do whatever you normally do whenever you're at home for an extended period of time, okay? <laughs> I take it full nudity might be a touch too. <laughs> <laughs> no, so uh, mark down days on my calendar till I hit the average age of death. Firstly, are you going off the average human mortality age? Because let's face it, that probably doesn't apply to you in the slightest. Well, how else do I predict my own natural demise? Do other egg layers have shortish lifespans? I think turtles live for like forever? Ouch, that's rough. But hey, at least your groovy lifestyle ought to shave a few years off that, right? So more cough nectar. I like, I okay, can I just say, like, we have normalized too much in this game. Like, we have, we have normalized a bit too much. Like, I am saying these sentences without giving them a second thought. Like I am, I am saying these sentences without giving it a second thought. Like they are completely normal things now. Like I am going, I am worried for how this game is going to affect my social skills. You know, what if I, what if I start calling my spit cough nectar? What then? Will I get reinvited to the party? Probably not. Probably not. Oh, well, what can you do? <sighs> Ironically, chugging cough nectar, once again, becomes THE cure! People drink thickened synthetic raspberry syrup to feel normal? Oh, just tasteless. Just tastes like stack kids with common colds. I'm drinking cough syrup. Oh. Don't worry, the rest of us drink it for the right reasons. Ooh, had me worried there for a second. Oh, and secondly, yeah, so you see, that... Waiting for death mumbo jumbo is far too relatable. Wait, but is it relatable good? I mean, but is it? What exactly is our cinematic vision here? Wasn't it to make the audience crap themselves? Right, exactly. But I can't personally vouch for having ever crapped myself from sheer empathy alone, you know? I sure have. Yeah, speak for yourself. That's what I'm saying. That wasn't even, that wasn't even in character. Ah, balls, I wasn't filming, and that was a perfect punchline. Can you say that again so I can record it? Please, I'm saying please. I'm saying please. There's no W involved. Sorry, I can't remember what I said five seconds ago at any given moment. That's actually, that's actually fair. I, I relate. You know, maybe I don't have a, a flush telephone head, but I at least relate to that part. Even what you just said there? I'm not gonna lie. I'm struggling to remember who you are. Oliver. My name's Oliver. I work at a, I don't know that, I don't know that word. Dia, 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 dia cinema. I'm a total hunk. Oh, I know, sorry. We're kind of dating, kind of filming a movie right now. Oh, kind of date. Ha <laughs> ha, now that's what I'm talking about. Woo. Yes. Right, groovy, glad to hear it. Glad to hear what? Note to self, beating Ronald Boo lines at intervals of exactly five seconds may increase authenticity of his line delivery, as you'll almost definitely think the script is happening for real. What was that? Uh, no, nothing. You know, scratch that. Maybe we should get some funky environment shots and then move to another location. Aha, speaking of funky, we should use each setting to its advantage, and this setting screams oddity to me. So you want me to scream oddity aloud? Nah, that's hardly groovy storytelling. Isn't the rule show, don't tell? So do you want me to do the dance or not? Look, I like you, Ronald Boo. You like me? You like me? Oh, you like me a lot, you say? Let's, let, yes. Yes. But that's what I'm talking about. Yes. 
Yes. Crap. Something tells me that if you do the dance, our relationship will be fundamentally altered because of it. That's fair. That's fair. No, that's fair. You think you think a terror bond asunder or instantly turn it hypersexual? <laughs> Depends on how I react, honestly. No, no. But you need something that utilizes the uniqueness of this uh this setting. I think you could whip up something, you know, gnarly to show the camera. I don't know, man. Are you into feet? <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Rambu Live channel. You may be wondering, what the hell is going on right now? Well, <laughs> you're just as confused as I am. You may be thinking, you know, <laughs> is this really worth it anymore? Well, I'm here to tell you that Maybe it, it could be. I honestly don't know. You know, may also be wondering, is every stream like this? And uh, I'd like to tell you no, but uh, no, it, it could be. Yeah, no, it, uh, it definitely could be. So uh, huh, make sure that you're followed and that you have notifications on. All right. <laughs> Are you in defeat? <laughs> that was not a good transition. <laughs> With cautious hesitation, I urge you to continue. Well, I've probably got a cleanish sock here around here somewhere. Oh, ah, here we go. Me only sock. Don't mind in the hole. I added that myself. Let's my scabs breathe. Yeah, all right, yeah, no, um, yeah, no, uh, I mean, no, <laughs> all right, oh man, that is gnarly, say, where's the other one anyway, did you lose it, no, I found this one, man, this is prime biopic content, can you tell me about your parents, please? Gotta get that origin story outlined. What if I don't remember my parents? Well, we could work the orphan angle. Is being an orphan fun? Uh, take it from me. Losing your parents is the most fun you'll ever have. You get to eat gruel. I do love free gruel. Nah, I'll just make something up. This orphan, the orphan shtick is too cliche. We're going for originality, aren't we? Originality and or making a bathtub sized wall a bathtub sized wad of solid cash, yes. I'll just make up something tragic on the spot. Alright, then ready when you are. <laughs> My name is Ronald Boo. I was born and raised in an oppressive shoe factory. Day in, day out, I manufactured shoes for feet I could never even sniff. Okay, odd criteria for tragedy, but go on. The shoes themselves were made out of poverty. Okay, we get it. Your life sucks. Give us new information. I slept in a gigantic pair of clogs made for an ogre in Denmark. What era is this set in? You say that as if there ever were ogre ogres in Denmark. Does the timeline matter? I suppose not. Besides, have you ever even been to Denmark? N not specifically, no. And see, you say you can't say crud then. For all you know, orgers are real and Denmark isn't. That doesn't sound correct, but I don't have enough data to refute it. Plus the Nope. Okay! No! No! Not the ogre! Damn it! Is nothing sacred to you? <laughs> It's ogre lore, pal. I will not allow you to tarnish my vision. The the ogre dong stays. Okay, look, not to sound rude, but this is not working. Is it too out there? Out there? 
Oh, pal, I'm having weird thoughts about the ogre now, and I'm getting all sweaty, and I'm honestly worried that you've awakened something in me, and I don't like it. <laughs> oh, boo-hoo, did someone get sweaty from visualizing ogre wieners? <sighs> we have a good time on this channel. We have a... We have a good time on this channel. No, you know what? We have a we have a great time after this chat. We we have a good time on the Rambu Live channel, don't we? We have a great time on the Rambu Live channel. You know? Oh man. Can't believe that I can't believe that everyone's everyone uh, we have a great time here. <laughs> Let us never think about this fabric created origin story again. Thank you. How's the film gonna start then? Maybe we need to just start later in the story? Will the audience get what happened previously without context? Do you have context that explained why a hexa-nippled isopod person with green skin and a head made out of an array of stitched together fabrics and skins is walking around? Right, let's just not bring the motion up then. I'm sure we can leave that for like a potential sequel or something. Radical, let's. All right, so after you left, whatever nondescript location you happen to have crawled out of, where'd you end up? Mm, most of what happened next is a bit of a blur. Get that image off my screen. Uh, <laughs> but I do remember one place from my past. <laughs> <coughs> Captivity. Wait, were you in prison? It's okay, it's, it's not... It's it's a, it's a fake image. It's a fake image. It's a, it was not real image. It's okay. It's not a real image. Uh, save the font quick. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I wasn't actually referring to people prison. People prison. You know, jail for humans. Human jail. Well, yeah, of course I meant human jail. Where else could you possibly mean? I wonder where else? The zoo! Ah, right. You meant Flamingo Jail. The big house. <laughs> you certain this is a good place to set your tragic past? You don't think captivity is tragic enough? It's kind of hard to be truly bummed out while sitting next to a ta tapper? I don't know what that is. I, I don't know what that is. So you're telling me if you got excruciating, if excruciatingly bad news, define excruciatingly bad. Let's say you find out your third pet rock was swept up in a tornado. Okay, that'd be absolutely heart wrenching. Continue. If you found out about this while outside the tapper enclosure, would the mere presence of a nearby tapir really soften the blow much? I. You could really hit once I'm out of visual proximity of no! The type here would do not to comfort you and you Oh god. What's this I hear? The roar of adventure, mayhaps. Oh god, not you. Ronald Boo, my fatherless bipedal green friend, you've returned at last. I I have not returned. I I merely came back to this location temporarily. You returned! Okay, yeah, I'm back. Bully to that, then. I say, I... Hey! Sorry to interject. Uh, doting. Kind of... Kind of boyfriend. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my- oh my god. Guys, do you see this? Do you see this right here? Oh my god. I don't care that we just got called fatherless. Guys, look at this. Oh my god. Guys, everyone stay calm. Stay calm, everyone. Calm. Everyone stay calm. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yes. Now that's what I'm talking about. Woo. Ah. How's it hanging? He gets another specimen. Hello, my equally featherless. Oh, that, that didn't say fatherless. That said featherless, didn't it? I thought it said fatherless. You know what? Fatherless, fatherless was funnier in the script. <laughs> you know what? It's fine. 
What brings you to my wondrous sanctum of malicious beasts and other foul monstrosities today? Oh, nothing much, sir. I'm just documenting Ronald Boo. We're, we're producing a groovy movie about his life together. My, what a thrilling notion. You know, Sonny, in a way, our goals are very much aligned. The sacrifices we make, dedicating our very lives solely to documenting the most noble of beasts, so the public may know their terrible fer ferocity. Ferocity, I don't know. Yeah, it's groovy. Very groovy, yes. Bully to that. Oh God, they're mingling. You know what I think would be a truly stupendous idea, my lad? Why, we should exchange information to strengthen both of our dossiers. Uh-oh. Oh yeah, that sounds gnarly, I'm in. Oh no, you shouldn't pop, you, you couldn't possibly fraternize with the enemy. The enemy? Mon Jer, I am just a humble documentarian, not unlike your dear Fez partner. And I must say, I do admire your choice in hatwear, my dear friend. <laughs> Likewise, sir. Say, how'd you like to be in our, f oh, sorry, that was the wrong voice. <laughs> say, how'd you like to be in our film, Mr. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. You mean to say you have, you mean to say you haven't heard of me? I'm sure Oliver doesn't read musta mustachioed monthly, Theo. I've actually finished every issue from 1995 onwards for your information. Oh. My boy, I am Theodore Rustlebelt, famed adventurer, explorer, documentarian, and zoo master. He's gonna steal our boy. No, he's not gonna steal our boyfriend. No, no, no. Unless, unless, unless Oliver is a is a is a terrible, terrible, awful person. No, he he knows. He's okay. All right. Theodore Rustlebelt would not be able to steal our guy. All right. Oliver is not a terrible person. Okay. He would not, he would not get with Theodore Rustlebelt. At least while he's kinda with me, all right? <laughs> and yes, I would simply adore the opportunity to appear in your film as a primary source of zoological hogwash. <laughs> yes, this is the development for sure. Say, for purely cinematographer, cinematographical reasons, do, do you have any baby photos of Ronald Boo? I'm afraid Ronald Boo was no longer juvenile when he found his way into our spurnful clutches. But I do have some photos of him all natural. I'm scared. Give me a... Uh, I'm kind of scared. Theo, you wouldn't. Oh, that's hardly that scandalous. Ronald Boo's naked right now. Wait, how long have I been... Ah, drat. You're correct, my friend. Oh. That entire time. Okay. That being said, you gotta see the angle I snapped in number four. The angle leaves very little to, to frame imagination. Hey, guys. <laughs> Rambu live here again. Um, <laughs> I'd just like to formally apologize for <laughs> absolutely everything. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> I thought that this was going to be a fun, slightly quirky game, but instead, uh, it was simply just uh, about laying eggs and uh, naked phone people. So, huh, my bad. What have I become? Anyway, let's get back to the game. Uh, may I see the Oliver? A word, please. Oh, uh, I think we got a... Well, we'll be right back, okay? Do return, yes. I have yet to show you the photos of Rambu riding on his old tricycle, after all. They're so wonderfully ill-filled, ill-fitting. Tremendously gawkable, yes. Say, are you doing okay? You kind of flipped your lid back there. Yeah, well, duh. You were, you were chatting with my former captor. Oh, right. Yeah, sorry, I realized some that might have just looked. But hey, he said he wants to be in the movie. Isn't that, if you put him in it, I walk. Unless you like, put devil horns on him and dub his footage to make him say dumb stuff. You know, that does give me a groovy segue into the golden question. 
A golden question? Well, yeah. We gotta consider villainy. Are you saying we have to consider a life of crime? Right, I'm sold. We just need a gun, a getaway ride. Uh, an Aryan old woman shall be shared from our combined mugging wrath. How do we get to... No, 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 no granny mugging. We're discussing cinema. What I meant to ask was, is our movie gonna, si gonna have some kind of... A maniacal villain? Don't most stories have villains? Yeah, I mean, most successful stories tend to have some kind of hurdle for the protagonist to overcome, you know? There's very seldom character development to be had merely loafing around, vegetating in trash, after all. Aw, oh, no crime. <laughs> Don't you want to join me in the trash, you know, holding hands? Okay, maybe that can't be an entire scene, but I could squeeze it in some house to excuse us shooting it. <laughs> maybe. Ah! Yay. But does that truly sound like the makings of a compelling story to you? Hmm, maybe. I gotta overcome something first. So my depository feels deserved or even earned. You might just be onto something. Well, w what's the alternative? Well, back on the villain train, it is a fact that almost every story has a grand antagonist of some kind. All action comedies have bad guys, after all. That must be it, then. After all, an action comedy is the art artsiest genre. I'm telling you, all great stories have antagonists. Right, most real-world love stories feature mother-in-laws. Yeah, now you're getting it. What you need is a nemesis. Who could that be? Well, wouldn't Theoror seem like an obvious candidate? Nah, I don't want him in my story at all. I don't know, man. Ground yourself. Think about how hammy that dude is. He bring a lot of gnarly energy to the role and give him the satisfaction, hard pass. Well, all right, you pitch a villain then. Who do you see as the villain of your story? Uh, <laughs> Little Billy. We gotta get Little Billy. Dump him? No, he is the love of my life. Screw you. Screw you. No. <laughs> Ban them. Ban that person. Instantly. Don't actually. Love you, mods. Little Billy. Okay, look, I'd love to take that brat down a peg, but this is your story, not mine. Oh, come on, don't remember what I told you on the subway? That, that yard high, <laughs> that yard high piece of crap got me arrested for child labor law violations. Sure he did. Oh, yeah. What a runty scallywag. I know, right? How very rude of him. Salutations, might you need some assistance? No. We've got it all under control, Theo. Hurl thine self from our proximity. Thank you. Right ho! Bully to that then. I say we just have you prance around in spandex and call it a day. Okay, that's a deal breaker. Why? What's wrong with spandex? You do not want to see how the first incarceration of this movie turned out. This is your second attempt at this? This sounds like something you should have mentioned sooner. I was hoping that if I pretended it never happened, eventually I'd just forget. I can still hear the stretching of spandex against my groin in my nightmares. Ah, sorry to hear that. In mine, it's just the familiar screams. Far less emotionally complicated. Ah, hell, maybe this is pointless. I mean, can we really reduce the struggle depicted in a complex narrative down to a single antagonist? What if the true villain was society. I'm not sure that a film we're trying to market to the general public should be about how unpleasant the target audience is. No, no, no. Hear me out. Maybe it's the people's perception of me. I can't see it, right, because I'm me. And you can't see it because it's a view you don't happen to share. Huh. Maybe you're right. 
Yeah, I think we need some complicated exposition shots showing... Ah, screw it. I'll just start the movie with a paragraph of Comic Sans text on a solid color background. Yes! With the expedition out of the way, we can just focus on the action-y stuff. Oh, see, there's the issue. There's the issue. Define action, because technically decomposing is an action. Let's say general movement or activity. Yeah, no, that's not me. Oh, come on. Surely there's some way we can use this groovy groove. I didn't, I do not want that word said. Oh, -ho! what we need is the footage of your daring escape. It's the ideal action narrative point, the missing link. How's about we ask Theo for the CCTV footage? Firstly, let's never speak to him again. That's my suggestion. Right, and secondly, I might have coated the lens with, I might have coated the lens of the nearest camera to my enclosure with silly putty. What? Why did you? To cover my tracks, of course. Oh, right, duh. Didn't Theo notice that you were missing though? Nah, I just left a burlap sack of potatoes in my bed. Wow, this place really is. A sneaky lemur or a particularly crafty dingo could get out of here, no problem. Where do you think I got the idea? Theo sucks, agreed. Huh. Okay, so, crazy suggestion here. What if you entered one of the nearby enclosures and I just filmed you climbing out all willy-nilly? We could totally just slap a camera overlay onto it, pass it off as your actual daring escape. You realize that almost every movie is just people lying on camera, right? What audience believes are forgery though? That's true. Every stream is also just lying on camera as well. You know, I'm actually 80 years old. It's true. I mean, I'm an 80 year old man. I just took really, really good care of my skin. All right. Uh, what audiences believe anything we filmed so far? Right, sold, let's do it. Right, excellent. It's time to climb out of the enclosure. So to our left, the noble alpaca enclosure. Sound good to you? Are alpacas friendly? I don't know. I've never been lost in the mountains of Peru and they don't tend to walk around the city much. You are ill experienced when it comes to handling alpacas. Yeah, it's definitely a skill I tend, I tend to embellish on my resume. Right, so what's in front of us then? Judging from the cardboard cutout, emu. That's not ideal. I've been closer to an emu than I have to an alpaca, admittedly. They're kind of like feathered dinos. Swans are also feathered dinos, in fairness. Guys, we get to we get to escape from an emu. Right, but imagine a man-sized swan. It is terrifying. With a gun for a head. Right, I've heard enough. We were fools for thinking to weaponize them. <laughs> they weaponized the emus? If another emu war kicks off, we'll be annihilated. Wait, I'm gonna quick save. Okay. 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 Emu enclosure. I wanna see the gun for a head. I wanna see the emu gun. Alright, it's time to take the plunge. Door is now emu proof as of 050715. Never again. All right, I've made contact with the soil. Oh, wait, that's that's not that's not the voice. Sorry. I seem to be in uncharted land, a new frontier. You're in the emu enclosure. Yep. You you getting this? Yeah, you look generally lost. Outstanding. Yes. I I I I get a jump scare whenever I look at myself in this game. What now? Well, if this is your daring escape, I guess the next step for you is to, you know, escape? Right. Uh, how do I do that? Well, oh, right. Ground dips, doesn't it? Yeah, of course it's deeper on the inside. If I could climb out from the inside, an emu could jump it, no problem. Oh, uh, would we kiss Oliver? I don't know, hopefully soon. Uh, this is certainly a mild predicament. I could always just open the zookeeper door and let you out. That wouldn't look very cinematic. Does any of this? Fair. All right, point made. Now let me out. Oh no, Oliver! Oliver, are you getting this? If the this is the emu that's now located right before you, then yes, I'm very much getting this. Oliver, am I in danger? Do you think it's aggressive? I think it's an emu. Oliver, this is no joke. Need I remind you of the great emu war? Emus have won 100% of all wars they have fought with mankind. 
One war, and they and they destroyed us. This one has a gun. It seems docile enough. War, war seldom changes, Fez man. All right, all right. I'll get the gate open in a moment. Uh-oh. Oh God, it's just standing there menacingly. I somehow doubt that emus are capable of malicious th Oliver, I think it's attempting to trap me here. You could step around it. Oliver, I think the emu is working with the Aurora. Dude, just step around. Oliver, I must duel for my freedom. Hold on, hold on. Right, camera's in focus. Do what you have to. Well, you punched an emu. And I'll do it again in a heartbeat. God, I love you. <gasps> What did he say? What did he say? Oh my god! What did he just say? What did he, what just, did he just... He just... Guys? 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 <laughs> Guys? Guys? <sighs> I need a second. I need a second. <sighs> yes! We did it! Yes! Yes! Now that's what I'm talking about. Yes. We did it. I mean, yeah, Groovy, this is good stuff. Dude, this footage is top notch. This is totally the last piece of footage we needed. Our ace in the hole. You really think so? I mean, it might be kind of hard to portray the footage as a heroic moment since the raw footage is just heartbreaking footage of you assaulting a massive but docile cotton ball with legs. But I'm sure with a few jump cuts, some borrowed shots from Stanley Dalton's Attack of the Emus, I can string something compelling together. So that's it? Yeah, I think we're done here. To be frank, I'm a bit worried that the Aurora might press charges against us considering you just assaulted one of his specimens. Oh, please. He loves punching animals. I'm sure he punches emus constantly. In invite him to the premiere. He'd adore this trash. Right. <laughs> Kiss now. I know. I know. I we'll, we'll get there, chat. We'll get there. Okay, everyone calm. Everyone calm down. Okay, we'll get there. All right. Right. Okay. I guess that's one guaranteed patron for opening night. Oh, man, am I pumped to get this movie finished? Absolutely stoked. I, I gotta get back to the cinema. Get to editing this for tomorrow night. I am not gonna be getting any sleep tonight. But hey, I'm sure that if I go long enough without sleep, I'll be too out of it to feel the impending sting of failure, right? <coughs> hey, before you go, I wanted to ask you something. Oh shoot. What's on the cards, my groovy dude? So the cinema's like, definitely haunted, right? Allegedly definitely haunted, yeah, why? Has anyone ever like, died in the building during its operation? Oh, now that you mention it. Yeah, there might have been an incident or two. Nothing out of the ordinary though, uh-huh. Big Bertha might have flattened the last projectionist to perform maintenance on her. Flattened? Rolled right over him, yeah. Turn him into a red pancake. What, that's, wait, did you say incident or two? Like, like plural? So no kiss? This is more important right now. Yeah, Big Bertha also kind of tore another maintenance guy's arm off. Then flattened him. When that didn't kill him. When in doubt, flatten the repair guy, as they say. Who says that? Who says that, Oliver? 
There was also the time Big Bertha rolled through the wall of the projection room and flattened some of the audience. <laughs> Dude, what? Rolled right over him. Oh my God. That, uh, that doesn't sound right. Hey, now, Big Bertha's our pride and joy. Mr. Dickens did right, splurging on a beautiful secondhand antique projector. Secondhand, who sold him the machine? A friendly witch doctor who was hosting a yard sale. Dude, the cinema, the cinema's haunted. In your opinion, it is definitely haunted. Let's just agree to disagree. No, let's, let's not. Right, then I'll be off. Oh, parting is such sweet sorrow. But hey, I'll see you at the premiere tomorrow. Right? You know it, baby. Provided I don't need to buy a ticket, of course. Perish the thought, friendo. I'll even scoop up some floor corn for you to scarf down if you come. Right, sold. See you then, partner. <laughs> Movie date? Let's go. Boy, what a day. You punched an emu. I did it for Oliver. For cinema itself. I mean, did you, did you though? Did you really? And what's that supposed to mean, bub? I mean, are you really certain that this movie is gonna achieve anything other than being a resounding flop? Well, Oliver has faith in it, so you know, I do too. Friendo, he literally said, I love you. No, chat, chat, he literally said, I love you. That outweighs the Friendo at the end, okay? It is not possible, unless, unless his emotions switch on a dime, for him to go from the beginning of the conversation and then switch during the end of the conversation, okay? He literally said, I love you, okay? Ah. <sighs> oh my God. Unless it's platonic though, I called him hot. What do you mean? Okay. <sighs> All right, come on guys, get it, get it together. Get it together. Ah, he's relying on a miracle though. It's blind faith. I get that in the air, that place is practically opaque, but he doesn't seem to see any further than his own, but, but he's not doing this for himself. He's doing it for Mr. Dickens. Do you think that Mr. Dickens really believes in Oliver? I'm sure he does. I mean, he's given Oliver so much, right? Right, so it's completely in character for him to indulge Oliver and give him a last ditch attempt to save the cinema, knowing he'll lose nothing if the movie flops. I'm sure Mr. Dickens just doesn't have the heart to tell Oliver that it's pointless. Oh. Oh. All right, you disembodied destroyer of dreams. What's your point then, eh? What do you want me to do? I don't know. Maybe try to temper Oliver's expectations at the premiere tomorrow? You can let him down gently, so he has time to come to terms with its inalienable failure. Is that the right thing to do? Part of some loving someone is being honest, even when you know they won't want to hear it. You really should have a discussion with him about the finished movie. Remind of him his other prospects, that everything will be okay when, if, the movie flops, on account of it being weird and low budget. Ah. What's the use? Go to sleep, you lummox? You can think more about this tomorrow. I agree with that sentiment fully, minus the thinking later bit. Good night, my ethereal maiden. Wait, I, I'm not a girl. Yes. Whoa, I'm honestly surprised. It seems the premiere is actually drawing attendees, like actual life people. I, I meant instead of nobody turning up, I, I expected an honest phone god Townway no show. Alas, Townway expectation. Yo, this has to be a dream, but you know what? Who cares? I guess my advertising campaign worked wonders then. I doubt you writing come to Olive Man premiere on condom wrappers and slipping them in random strangers pockets got very many of these people to come here. You never know, it could have. Yeah, but you're kind of really illiterate. Most of Dialthumb probably can't read hieroglyphics. If those pyramids do read them, I'm sure modern man can. Uh-huh. You should go inside. Speak to Oliver. Yes, go I shall. Yes. This has to be a dream. Uh, hey, uh, hey, Ronald Boo. I'm super stoked that you actually came. Very groovy. 
Uh, I always do. What was that? That was some kind of euphemism, right? Oh my god, it was. Oh. Oh, I did not realize that it was. Oh, I did not. I did not. I did not realize. I did not realize. I did not realize. Uh oh. Uh oh. I did not real. I did not realize that that was a euphemism. Um. Well. Well. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Yes. It was. You doing okay, man? You seem generally disheveled. Oh. Y you know, I'm running on roughly zero hours of sleep. M mo mo Wait. What? I don't know what that is. Did you stay up all night working on the movie? I sure as heck did, yeah! Oliver Hun, that quite that can't be healthy. Well, you know what they say. N no pain, no gain. Oh Oliver, bodybuilders say that. Are you really gonna take advice from jack dudes who guzzle raw eggs? By that token, would I take advice from a green dude who eats literal garbage? You know what? Too shame. I'd go with the beefcakes on this one. This movie. It's my opus. Our opus. You see, at first I thought, hey, hey this looks kind of cute. Could make this PG-7, add a few dancing CG raccoons. Ah, small dancing CG creatures. Objectively a fine co choice. Go on. But then I thought, what I need to do is to think outside of the box. So, me, me thunketh, what about a story that starts off funny and then silly, but then becomes soul-crushingly tragic? Uh, but then I thought, what if the movie has no genre? Just a string of raw footage arranged out of order and with ill-fitting music placed over the whole thing. You fell asleep on your keyboard, didn't you? That is an interesting theory. Oh, Oliver. It's cool. Oh, it just... Whatever you do, don't tell... Delio! Ollie, my boy. The nice your big... No, night. Are you ready for the grand premiere, lad? I, I sure am, sir. Marvelous. Simply wondrous. I'm right chuffed to see what you've made. Yeah, I'm sure people will find it just dandy, sir. Not to worry, lad. The movie you need only make enough in sales to revitalize my failing enterprise. So, no pressure, lads. Right, yes, Ruby. Anyway, I must go take my seat, as I don't wish to miss the euphoric magic of the silver screen. Cheerio, lads. Well, he sure seemed chipper. Yeah, it's almost like he expects my film to save his failing business. <laughs> huh, well, I wanted to talk to you about that. Oh, hold on. There's a few people behind you in line. We can talk about whatever that is while I'm stalking the real, okay? I see, wait, just let me step to one side. Oh my God. Greetings, my respective Fezd and Green friends. I'm here to attend your dazzling cinematic premiere as a guest of honor. Stellar, man. Glad to hear it. Oh, I'm sure you most certainly are. Having a guest as distinguished as the one and only Theodore Rustelbelt. Can I murder this guest with my bare hands, hon? No, not this one. Wrong, boo. All right, that'll be $6.99 for a ticket, sir. Gads, you truly expect me to pay for a ticket at my own red carpet event? But, Theodore, you aren't actually in the movie. Correct. A specimen for my vast array of emu most certainly is, yes. I'm here on his behalf. Well, he recovers from his life-threatening injuries. That emu is fine, and you know it. I know nothing of the sort, I'm afraid. Well, listen, Mr. Russell, this isn't personal. Everyone's got to pay for a ticket. This very event is a fundraiser to raise money to keep the cinema open. All right, I'll tell you what, my lad. 
I was about in exchange for a free ticket into your screening, I give you free and unrestricted access to the zoo. But is an entry to the zoo already free? Well, how about that? It looks although I've already gone through with my end of the bargain. I suppose that means you have a legal and unwavering obligation to... All right, all right, you, you crusty. Just go on in. Bully to that then. See you in Hollywood, my boy. I society, here I come. Oh God, I despise that man. You know what? I should really listen to you more. Hell yeah, you should. If you think my takes on people are nifty, you should see my takes on jerkies and... <laughs> Sup, bozos? Billy's here now. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Scram, get on out of here. Tonight's our big night, and I have enough to do without having to fixate my hawkish gaze on you all night. Yeah, plus some movies rated I ate it up, dude. I, I, I shed my pants halfway during filming, and I refuse to put them back on. Oliver, you did remember to add a blur in post, right? Ah, crap. I guess the movie would just be that more memorable, huh? Yeah, sorry. No minors allowed. Scram. Hey, I'm no minor. Look, I've even got my ID on me. Oh, well, crap. Well, what do we do then? Ah, oh, sh shoot. Oh, well. I think this identification might be fake. I can't pinpoint any obvious discrepancies. Look, you little brat. It's a no either way. Like I said, I can't have you tarnishing my film's one opportunity to save this place with your loud shenanigans. Loud shenanigans? Hey, Bozo, for your information, I actually plan to be on my best behavior tonight. You told me earlier that you were gonna smuggle your megaphone into the theater. To repeat it, to repeatedly bellow, to repeatedly bellow Krungus during the climax. You, what are these words? Who wrote this? <laughs> you snitch. You're, you're like nine. What the actual? Where are you learning words like? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I don't know what those mean. Hell, you think I didn't come up with Krungus myself? I've got like eight kids on the playground who can back me up. Scram, go, get out. Ah! Fine, whatever, bozos. Your movie's gonna totally bomb anyways, bro. No assistance from me required. <laughs> Ciao. God, I hate that little... Uh, Krungus, 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 Krungus! I'm dialing the cops right now. Is this how I come off to Jerry? I need to send him another fruit basket or something. Another? The first one didn't seem to sway him. Huh. Define fruit. Apple core, banana peel, used egg. Hey guys, what's up? Rambu live here. Um, so just just gonna give you guys a little a little a little just a little a little bit of information about what he just said. When he means used eggplant, he means cooked and prepared, as in cut up and cooked, and not in any other way. <laughs> this has been your Rambu Live moment. Make sure that you're followed. What? Define a used eggplant. Oh, well, never mind. I guess we're just getting right into it. Uh, hey, hey, look, another customer. <laughs> hey, it's me. I'm here now. Oh, hey, sup, Randy? What brings you here? Oh, oh, you know, I was just rummaging around in the dumpster up back when I overheard someone mentioning that the premiere... Well, heck, it's groovy to have you here. Y yeah, so, uh... Wh what's the movie about? That's a great question! R right, yes. I'm in it, I'm, I'm in it, I'm in it, I'm in it. Ah, what the? Wait, something about you feels familiar. 
You spent much time at the park, perhaps. Oh! So, you're the naked green figure I keep seeing scurrying around in my peripheral vision. Oh yeah, that'd be me, all right. My fears of losing my own mind have now been replaced by the tangible fear of encountering you. Hey, that's progress. Good job, man. Yeah. All right, so that'll be $6.99, Randy. You couldn't offer me a discount on account of me being vaguely familiar, could you? I suppose I could drop it to $5 since I... Uh, how about 25 cents? R Randy. If you have no money to your name, then why did you even bother showing up? I just wanted to get in out of the cold. Good call. This place is as warm and moist as can be. Y yeah, about that. Why is it so humid in here? <laughs> I like how as soon as I said, as soon as I said moist, the content warning started to pop up. Like, <laughs> like the content warning, like, like command that we have just popped up as soon as I said moist. That was, that was great. <laughs> I'm sure it's just from the mole on the walls breathing. Huh. Well, it is warm. Look. You're the last student line, Randy. Just go sit in the back and don't make any noise, all right? Hot dog, Oliver, you're the best. D can you be my father? N Randy. I'm going, I'm going. Excuse me? Well, I mean, all right. <laughs> huh. I keep forgetting to ask him about that bandage on his head. I heard from little Billy plagued me upon him that he hit his head on a rock, but I'm sure there's gotta be more of the story than that, right? If it's anything like him, I don't want to hear it. Oh, come on, Randy's lovely once you get to know him. I'm sure he'd make someone very happy. Yeah, an organ snatcher, maybe. Or a mean-spirited coroner looking to take his frustration out on a body. Is Randy dead in this scenario? Inconsequential. Perhaps, yeah. Randy turmoil and bodies aside, we've got a screening to initiate. Initiate isn't a very call-to-action verb, is it? Like start, do, make, squirt, those have punch. Like initiating is like pressing the on button on an ointment making machine. Let's just do the screening. Yes, let's. <laughs> let's squirt the movie, everyone. All right, let's get, all of man, what is this space? No, guys, remember, no caressing Bertha. All right, I mean it this time, Oliver. No caressing Bertha. No matter what. No matter what. All right. Oh, this is my vile sanctum, me lair. Oh, projector room number one. Is that, is that, is that, is that, is that, it sure as heck is. Say hello to big Bertha, our pride and joy. Oliver, she just moved. Yeah, she probably just had some air stuck in her. Oliver, she moved again. Yeah, you know. Oliver, I think your movie projector is sentient. And angry. Oh, don't be ridiculous. She's just... She's got a lot of soul. I'm pretty sure she devours souls. <laughs> don't forget to don't forget to empty the piss jars, me boy. Uh, well, if she's eating souls, then how are said holes haunting the place then? Hmm. Ha! Checkmate. Ah, shoot. Okay, maybe we're slightly haunted. Laugh it up. Okay, Oliver, she shouldn't be in here. She's a wild animal, man. You're not sitting when I turn her over to the zoo, are you? You need to let her roll around in the open plains where she can feel the open air in her pipes and bolts and roll over as many small critters as she wants. It's not right having her all cooped up in here. But she's our only movie projector. Dude, you can buy a used projector at a garage sale for like $15. Don't you want her to be happy? You're right, you're right. I'll bring this up to Dickens after the premiere. 
if we have time to talk about anything other than our movie's fast success and the sudden salvation of the cinema itself. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, Boo, can I ask you a hard question? One that I'd like to answer you completely honestly. Uh-huh. This movie. The one we should have loaded into Bertha minutes ago? Yeah, right, that one. So sad. Do you think... Do you think it'll turn things around for me? For us? Uh... Ah, see? I knew this would come up. I'm right, as always. Shut up, I have a question to answer. Did you just tell me to shut up after I finished speaking? You could just answer my question, which I had already finished asking. Not gonna lie, I was talking to the narrator. You realize the movie is done, don't you? Pal, I'm not recording you right now. The movie's ready to air. Like, right now. Speaking of, gotta ask, do you think the movie will turn things around? Look, man, I haven't even seen the movie. For all I know, it's just 90 minutes of me gargling paint thinner. <laughs> Stop saying this, we'll get to it, okay? Okay, not all 90 minutes are comprised solely of... Ah, shoot. That's already a sign of turbulent development process. There should realistically be little to no paint thinner gargling to fill extra time up. You know, I think you expected too much from yourself. Okay, fine. I rushed the editing. I get it. No, I mean all of this. You're in your 20s, man. That's pretty young in human years. Isn't it? So, what? You think developing a film was too much? I don't get how you expected to repair Mr. Dickens' dying business on your own. On your first try, at the last moment possible. Uh, hey now, for all we know, the public could love this movie. And they could despise it, correct? How do phones kiss? Guys, you guys are getting ahead of yourself. You guys are you guys are heading you guys are getting way too ahead of yourself. Stop thinking about how phones kiss. Okay? Stop stop thinking about how if phones kiss or not, okay? Isn't it crazy that you're relying on this one shot to define your future? Phone god, you're right. I've set myself both of us up for failure. Hey now, I don't give a flying if this flops. I didn't mean you and me. I meant me and Mr. Dickens. Oh, right, yeah. But look, you and Mr. Dickens will live. I've always got a room at my tent if you need somewhere to crash. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. That that happens. Sorry. Look, that's sweet, real sweet. But this was all going to happen anyway, man. I just want you to be okay if slash when it does. Okay. I've we've done our best. Time to load Bertha up and get to it. Then, speaking of, you gotta release her into the wild soon. I know, I know, like tomorrow soon. I know, I, I know. I don't know what that said, whoops. People could really love this. Y yeah, I suppose they could. All right, well, it's been real, but here goes nothing. Oh God, Big Bertha. Oh shoot, uh, hello Dialtown, Rachel from the Dialtown News Network here. This just in, last night's premiere of <laughs> Passion of the Frog Thing has been reported as a resounding failure. No! Despite curious advertising efforts, in the end, the event only had a modest turnout of 24 unsa unsatisfied patrons. Of the four viewers who happen to return the showing, three are now comatose. Uh-oh. The remaining reviewer who's still conscious doesn't really want to talk about what he saw. Poor guy. We've interviewed a few citizens who attended premiere and they had this to say. Honestly, I just wanted to get in out of the cold, but I think hypothermia would have been more palatable in all honesty. The lack of footage by itself was criminal. Criminal, I say. Say, is this live? Come on down to the downtown city zoo. Friends, we have two bears. Two bears, bully. Okay, enough of them. 
honestly, that movie converted me from an unsure agnostic to a firm atheist. No merciful god would have let that scene where the green one garled paint thinner exist, no matter how disinter disinterested he is in our plight. Well, there you have it. You know, they say that all publicity is good publicity. But to those people, we at the Dial Tone News Network would like to recommend giving... Wait, we at the Dial Tone News Network would like to recommend giving the Prashen of Frog thing a watch and seeing how you feel then. <gasps> a watch? Good morning, Rollaboo. I hope you're... What in phone's god name are you staring at? Put a frog in a pot. I'm watching him try to climb out. Just a pro tip here. The last 17 times you tried this, the frog died. Yeah, but this time, there's no lead, nor a lit fire under the pot. So, the odds are fair. Right. What's your end game here, anyhow? Ah, I want to see the definitive threshold of frog slaughter. Yes, that's... Say, I wonder how Oliver's premiere went. Isn't that a much more engaging topic to think about? Nah. Little Billy told me a few days ago that it apparently bombed. We haven't seen Oliver in days? What? Why haven't we seen Oliver in days? In fairness, is Little Billy really a reliable source of information? Yeah, he was the... Oh. He said it was an inside job. Conducted by clowns. In fairness, he did show me a newspaper that reported the clown thing. Yeah, but in fairness, you're illiterate. I bet you any money the article wasn't about what he said it was. What makes you say that? Why would the article's picture a bit of a tractor flattening a beach sail? Seal. Why was there a tractor even on the beach in the first place? Maybe if you knew how to read, you could have found out. Fine, I'll go visit Oliver and ask him about his lousy premiere. Good boy, son. Dad? Is my dad the narrator? Oh my god. Need to see Oliver. Oliver? Where is he? Where's the boy? Well, I don't know. I'm sure you walked to the right place. This... This isn't the cinema. Mark my words, the cinema was right here. That must mean... Ikes. I guess it's already gone. Oh, I was too late. I might still be able to get Oliver's mailing address to send your condolences via mailman, mailwoman, or perhaps carrier pigeon. Ah, yes, the three genders. Oh, I love... Hey, a friendo, I was wondering when you dropped by. What's the haps? Olive man, you're, you're here. Have you returned here once more to burn the place down with a scornful rage? <gasps> Did you do all of this? I... I lugged the remaining furniture out of here and took an axe to the light fixtures, if that's what you're talking about. But fortunately, I'm neither a vandal, salvager, nor a copper wire thief. Then why'd you wreck the place? Seems rather rude to me. Hey, I'm just following Mr. Dickens' orders. Oliver, my boy, if you're not stripping copper wire from the walls... And why would Mr. Dickens order such mayhem, such needless destruction? Such abundant and ceaseless malarkey? Well, okay, I might have misspoken. I guess I am salvaging somewhat since it is my job to salvage what's left over from our failed cinema business. I, I don't know, Sam, what else of value could possibly be left here? I heard from Little Bill, I'm lear I heard from Little Billy that the premiere bombed. Of course he'd tell you that. He showed me an article from the Happenings paper. Oh, he showed you the newspaper review. Yeah, he said they tore you to shreds. Every single critic who attended the premiere and isn't comatose. In fairness, that's only one critic. But, I mean, yeah, the film didn't exactly get glowing reveals, you know, on account of it being so groundbreaking. True artists never appreciate it in its own time. I don't know, man, let me quote the review. If I could douse a film in gasoline and light it up, I'd watch the film burn with glee. And this time, I'd actually enjoy watching it. Hey, my reviewer had 90 whole minutes to burn this place down while the film was playing. He was totally bluffing. Oliver Swift's newest and only movies is an abortion of cinema itself. That makes me wish I was likewise aborted. Why are you guys all saying kiss? We're having, we're having just a moment, okay? Let me have my moment. See, that's still a strong statement. In the same way assassinating Bigfoot over a parking lot, would, over a parking ticket would be. <laughs> Bigfoot totally can't drive. Bigfoot, I'm sure he can drive. 
look, I can't refute that Bigfoot. <laughs> but you also can't refute that negative publicity is still publicity. For your information, almost 5,000 people ended up showing up to the screening after that review. Oh my God, wait, what? They all went to gawk at our marvelous train wreck. Wait, you made bank? Yeah, people turned up in droves to see our depraved horror flick. Wait, the movie we filmed was a horror flick. Well, I initially imagined it more of a transcendent piece of media that encapsulated both the sincere beauty and the raw anger of all that falls under the huge thumb of the phone god, and our movie wasn't that. People didn't really notice the beauty under the divine thumb, but plenty saw the untapped blistering rage and shat themselves. So people turned up expecting a cutting edge horror flick. Yeah, and we delivered. <laughs> Why did someone just say Tiger King 2? Wait, what, what was, what was, wait. Someone just said Tiger King 2 and then that was it. That was their only message. All right, that makes sense. The premiere was a success then. So wait, why on Fogod's Green Earth are you tearing the cinema apart? Well, see, Mr. Dickens and I had a conversation about expectations. Uh-huh. Don't get me wrong. He was immensely thankful that I'd save the cinema, but it turns out he really didn't think I could actually pull this off at all. Just wanted to see what I'd come up with. Huh, why? Well, Mr. Dickens informed me of something pretty surprising, actually. Turns out operating a cinema wasn't actually his ultimate dream at all. Oh, he was room to go and direct movies of his own. Huh. You know how it is. Oh, we, okay, guys, get, get the white people sad. Oh my God. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Huh. Uh, you know how it is. Mr. Dickens grew up in a different area. He started a family once he came of age, which he obviously had to provide for. He didn't have the opportunity to just up and leave for Hollywood. The stakes for failure were too high. He had people depending on him, you know? It just wasn't an option. Yeah, but I don't see what this has to do with us or our movie. Well, for a while, I wondered why Mr. Dickens was so encouraging when I pitched the old Save This Era Cinema with an indie movie idea. I suppose I just figured that he thought my idea was just dandy and that'd be a surefire success. But now, we get it. He had no faith in the movie at all and was certain the cinema would have to shut down, no matter what. Why was he so sure you'd fail? Aside from the fact that the entire business itself was collapsing in on itself? Yeah, that's not good for that, I guess. You see, when I pitched the idea, Mr. Dickens said he saw his younger self in me. The idealist, the idealistic younger version of himself who would have given anything to drop everything and become a movie director. Mr. Dickens wanted, more than anything, for me to take the risk that he never could. That he, and only he, shoulder the burden of my failure, allowing me to try again and maybe succeed. Oh, that's actually like, oh, that's that, oh, wow, that's that. Dang, that's, that's hidden. My God. Mr. Dickens said he was so proud of me for doing what he never could. And that's precisely why I couldn't allow this place to remain open, if it meant that it'd say the complete extent of my potential. So what was, so what, that was it then, the end of his dream. Or so I thought. <clears throat> One of the bad reviews really tore the cinema itself apart as a venue, said that it suited the horrifying train wreck of a film being shown here. And that's when it occurred to me that just maybe I was actually fighting something that we could use. If people are so sure that this place is supposedly haunted, this, this place is very haunted, Oliver. Okay, fine. The place is absolutely riddled with specters, spirits, and other, and other assorted ghouls. Happy now? Immensely. Go on. So, I realized, if Mr. Dickens didn't even really want to own a cinema, and he wants, me to, and wants to see me spread my own wings and make my own creations, and this venue alone is considered pretty horrific, with terror apparently being my unknowing signature. The solution's obvious. It is. Dial Town's first horror attraction. Wait, like a like a scare house. Right, right. You know, I realized. Horror attraction, Paul, you. Maybe I was making a mistake, trying to go against the grain, to convince people that they wanted something that they clearly didn't want. Honestly, this seems to be the best way forward. So that's why you're hacking the place apart? To make the place even more unsightly, yes. 
the best of all, Mr. Dickens gets to assist me in creating exhibits and stuff. Guys, we have new we have new slow song. Guys, hold on. Guys, hold on. We have guys, we have another we have another slow song. Hold on. One second. <laughs> okay, we're good. Oh, okay, we're fine. I'm ready. I'm ready. Ah. Oh, ready. So he gets a second chances at his dream too. What do you think of this poster? Aww. Excited no. It's cute. Hell would be cute even if it was just you. Aw, shucks. I do owe you something though, you know. Well, here it is. Thank you, sincerely. I could have attempted on its own, granted. But I don't think I could have ended up here on my own. You believed in me when nobody else did, and stood by my side through thick and thin. You even let me document you, so I could take a financial risk for a dying cinema. All for the dream of a man you hadn't even met. There's nothing gnarlier than that, bro. I'd go to hell and back for you, man. You know that. This is so nice. It's just, it's just sweet. It's just sweet. Oh man. Besides the sex nipple part, but it's sweet. You don't know how much I appreciate that. Man, you know what the best part is? We're the only horror attraction on Earth with real ghosts. I hope. Oh God, we don't even have to pay them since they're dead. Oh, I think one of the ghosts might be a dead union leader. So we'll see how that goes. So I guess this all worked out. I guess so. What if Big Bertha? Oh, I did what you suggested. I let her go. She's free now to roam phone God's green earth as she pleases. <laughs> that was that was good. <laughs> good. Now she's the great outdoors problem. Actually, nah, I misspoke earlier. Come to think of it, the best part is that I. Hey, bozos! How's it again? I heard your movie totally bombed. The best part is that I get to do this. Yeah! Out you go, you little scrot! This attraction is 18 on me! Woo! Ouch, my youth glands! Ah, rad. He's maimed now. <laughs> this truly is the best possible ending. The ending, the ending where everything works out just fine for Oliver Swift, the gnarliest man in Dial Town. That was sweet. That was very sweet. No kiss, no kiss. But hey, there's a future. You never know. You never know. All right. Well, I think that'll be the stream for today. Um, yeah, this was really good. I had a ton of fun. Um, let me get up. There we go. All right. I'll play this again tomorrow because we still there's still so many endings to this game. Like there is an entire other like there are other paths. Like there are entire other paths that we can take. So we're going to play this again tomorrow. OK. All right. We'll play this again tomorrow if I stream tomorrow, which I most likely will. OK. I'll let you guys know on my alt Twitter, okay? I'll see you guys tomorrow. Make sure that you follow if you want to right now. You'll show up on screen. Look at this. You'll show up on screen if you follow and everything and if you subscribe as well. Thank you guys for all the subs. Uh, this is the one year anniversary of the charity subathon and everything, which is awesome. Uh, I do plan to do another charity subathon very soon. So be ready for that. Uh, I think probably next month when I move, hopefully. So yeah. So yeah, as soon as I move, we're doing a charity subathon. So yeah, uh, this was fun. This was really, really fun. Oh my God, it's actually been four hours. I did not realize that. This is this is the first time in a while that I've been able to just stream and like not feel like bad after like two hours. That's been nice. That's been nice. All right, thank you Grim Madness for the five tier ones. Thank you guys for all the subs today. Thank you for the 13 months. Thank you. Thank you Gummy Bear for the follow. Thank you Mars. Thank you Panda. Thank you uh, Crystal for the three months. Thank you. 
yeah i will see you guys uh probably tomorrow um if i don't have anything else to do tonight i might do an alt stream just playing like binding of isaac or something um but yeah that was really really fun i will see you guys tomorrow i'll see you guys tomorrow probably all right thank you guys for all the subs thank you guys for all the follows i will see you guys then all right if i stream tomorrow it'll be this if not then i'll probably see you guys on like well no not tuesday um I'll, I'll try to stream tomorrow it might be this it might be something else but we'll see all right bye, -bye everyone bye thanks for watching make sure that you're followed that you have notifications on and everything thank you anxiety ghost for the five tier ones thank you all right thanks for watching i had a lot of fun i hope that you guys did as well thanks for being here all right all right bye bye, -bye everyone bye bye everyone. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Bye. Hope you enjoyed. Hope that you guys are doing well. Let's see if my Twitch channel exists. All right. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.